The path of progress is not linear. It kind of looks like a jagged, if you're lucky, step ladder. What does that mean? Two steps forward, one step back, sometimes two step backs. Okay, so why do we end up stopping? Most of us understand this. Here's why. You mess up, then you feel bad about messing up. Then you feel bad about feeling bad. The shame spiral. You get into that spiral and all those things you do to comfort yourself, like eat hyperpalatable foods, maybe lay down on the couch, watch TV, distract yourself, become that much more alluring. So look, here's the deal. You're going to mess up. Everybody does. Don't get stuck in the shame spiral. Hmm. That's you know, a tough one. Uh, I think said it best was Paul Abdul. <laughs> what? <laughs> what two steps forward, I oh my two God. steps back. Oh, my, oh my God. God. I can't even remember that. Oh, my God. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, I, was, well, I used to love her. I, I actually haven't thought about any of her songs in a long I did, too. Did you? Massive. massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, too. Ah, but yeah, it's massive. a track. No, Anyways. Do you guys, you guys remember coaching clients and how, like, how, you know, this would pop up, right? They would, they'd be like, oh, I'm doing so good. I'm so consistent. And they come back I'm like, oh, this weekend I totally screwed up. But then they'd be feel bad about the screw up. Then they feel bad about feeling bad. And then it was like really hard to get them back in the groove. Um, and then, you know, personally, I experienced that myself, not with fitness yeah. and nutrition, but with other aspects where like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do some growth mm -hmm. and then I screw up. I get stuck in this spiral of like, oh, yeah, I'm inevitably you hit a wall. I mean, like yeah. you said, it's not linear. Uh, there's not, a lot no of things. <laughs> there's so many systems and things to account for uh, with your body, and 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 you know, you you can't just apply the same formula over and over again. Unfortunately, yeah. But it also makes it interesting and dynamic. So. Totally. This is uh this is part of the equation. Um, when I talk to clients about how often we should do uh you know body fat tests yeah. and then recalibrate yeah. right and. We just had a live caller, I think it was, when I had brought this up um, and said that, you know, don't adjust after one bad body fat test. And that was just kind of a rule that I had mm -hmm. when I was competing and I was tracking this so consistently is like, because I, I knew that I was, I was calculating everything and I knew that like, okay, this is the plan. This is, and it should math, should work out. But just sometimes it, you know, because of things like sodium, water, maybe in this, in your case, what you're talking about, just a couple bad days of dieting and or missing your workout and you could get this bad reading, you know, or even a little bit of air combination of all of them. And then you get this bad body fat test or result, you know, after two weeks of work and you think that it's got to go in this direction always. And then it doesn't. And then you either one, you go, oh, fuck it all forget it and get spiral mm -hmm. or you go course correct and like adjust and normally overcorrect. And so I always made this rule that I had to have two, you know, negative tests in a row to get me to switch directions because of the uh, natural ebb and flow of yeah. this. It's interesting too, how much easier to give other people grace when they screw up. But then when yourself, right. it's like, you know, you'll come down so hard on yourself. And, and what, what the, the, the part of this, I think that's most so important is when you look at, a person's relationship to food and let's say exercise, one of the guaranteed ways to ensure that you'll fail is if you eat and exercise because you hate yourself. If you hate yourself, then then diet becomes restrictive. And at some point you end up rebelling, going the other direction. Then you want to comfort yourself with food. And exercise is a punishment. Um, and, and eventually you'll want to stop punishing yourself. And so you'll say, I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to work out anymore. It's this this shame spiral, um, and show, and I know it's easier said than done, but I think what used to help me at least with clients was I would tell them ahead of time, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to be consistent. You're going to stumble. Everybody does. Nobody is perfect. Um, and when you do stumble, it's important you give yourself grace and that we just continue moving forward. But if you dwell on the fact that you screwed up or messed up or that you were unable to progress, um, as fast as you'd wanted, if you dwell on that, then all those behaviors, those comforting behaviors, those distracting behaviors, or those self-punishment behaviors, they become so strong and they start to want to take over. Um, and it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work long-term. In the long-term, it turns into running away from, or just, I mean, gosh, if, if you're one of those people that just uh, endlessly punishes yourself, well, then you'll become orthorexic with your diet or overtrain with your workouts, which is what we run into with people in our space. But a lot of people don't talk about this. A lot of trainers and coaches don't talk about this with their clients and they need to. This is why clients do so well and then just disappear. If you're a trainer and you experience this, where you're like, yeah, I do really well with clients. And then after six months, 
I tend to lose them and they're gone. Yeah. And then you, th you tell yourself, well, it's because they're not disciplined. Mm -hmm. That's probably not what the issue is. It's interesting because it's, it's also like it's the right dose because you do have to recognize as a signal, like there's need for change. Yes. And so you have to respond by, um, you know, applying something that's, um, you know, beneficial for you, but at the same time, not punish and, and beat yourself down to the point where it's, it's completely detrimental. If you go, uh, all in on that, uh, perspective. Yeah. I think the biggest problem, and it, and it speaks to the point you're making is our expectations are unbelievably skewed. And this to me is what made the, the, the difference between good coaches and great coaches were the coaches that were able to lay out the correct expectations yeah. of a journey. So we're, we're marketed to that, you know, look this way in 30 days or take this pill and look at these crazy mm -hmm. and like the biggest loser results. And we have so much information that's uh, circulating around how quick you can do something. And the reality is like the, the clients that you change their lives fundamentally, like it was never overnight. It was never 30 no. days or even 60 days. It's like, a year, it's like this, yeah, it's yeah. this lifelong pursuit that takes a really long time to see th these huge changes that you want to see. And I think too many coaches and trainers fall into the marketing trap of selling these clients on the idea that I can get you there really quick because it's what gains them the client initially. And then they fail to have that conversation until it comes up where they're like, the client's now frustrated. It's four to six weeks later. And I'm like, Hey, I haven't lost any weight or I even gained weight or I've only lost two pounds. And they're frustrated because their expectations were not set. And the best coaches and trainers have this ability to sit down with a client and say, Hey, listen, I, I know you want this. I know people have told you this. I know that there's examples that you might even know of this, but the reality is this is more what it looks like. This is what we should expect and to not get discouraged when it, when that doesn't happen, because that's just part of this. I be, as a trainer, I became so much more successful with my clients when I was uh, able to give them and show them grace consistently. Mm -hmm. Like they'd come to me and they'd say, Oh man, I went on vacation, Sal. And I, I, I know you gave me a workout. I didn't do a single workout. I ate terribly. And I would respond and be like, did you enjoy yourself? Well, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun. That's awesome. You yeah. know, that's great. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. By the way, most people don't work out. We're on their vacation. I gave them to you, but you didn't have to do it. Yeah. And to be honest with you, you had a good time. So that's great. Let's move forward. And when they would hear that from me, even when it would happen repeatedly, that, and by the way, this doesn't mean lying to your client. You're also honest with them. Cause then if they come back and be like, why am I not getting great results? Well, I mean, we're taking a few steps back, which is totally expected. It's tough. It's challenging, mm -hmm. but you're moving in the right direction. When I learned how to do that with my clients and show them that, they would, they would, they were able to show it to themselves a little bit and they would come to me because here's what happens when you don't do that. And if you don't do this for yourself, this will happen. Either a, you'll, you'll turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction so hard that you end up spinning out, right? You overcorrect or B, this is what I do. If I get stuck on a shame spiral, I run. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. That's not for me. I'm yeah. going to go over here or yeah, I'll pretend you like rebel it, against it, rebel against it. So it's, it's a, it's a really hard one. Uh, to get around, but showing yourself grace. Uh, one of the best strategies I've found is to put it outside of myself. Like, mm -hmm. okay, how would I treat someone else that I cared about that was going through this? Would I really be speaking to them in this way? Because otherwise I'll get stuck in this like all day, you know, beat yourself down uh, type of uh, scenario. That just, not only does it not work, and I think you said, what you said, Justin, was brilliant. You have to stop at some point and ask yourself, is this helping me? <laughs> what I'm doing? I know I messed up, Yeah. but now it's been three hours of me beating myself up. Is this helping me or is it slowing me down? Well, it's a really hard thing to zoom out. It's a, it's a hard thing to, to view yourself uh, and your journey um, with longevity. Uh, a lot of people, like, it's transactional. It's every day. It's like, yeah. what I, what, like my repeated patterns that I just see today. I just see this going on right now and I'm failing, you know? And so it's just like you get stuck in this, uh, you know, in this pit. Uh, and, uh, if you, if you can just zoom out and see that there's, there's, there's pits all along the journey, but you're still moving and making progress. And, and, you know, the broader perspective is, uh, the amount of times that you're, you're doing well, like supersedes all these little pitfalls. Today's program giveaway is maps power lift. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, our sale this month, huge. MAPS Anabolic, half off. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show.
So uh, speaking for coaches and trainers, are we getting worse or better at this? Generally? Yeah. Like, this is obviously a conversation we've known about for yeah. 20 years. That's a good question. Okay. And hmm. we've been working on ourselves as coaches and trainers to be better at that. Yeah. Your peers. Today, when you look at the landscape and the overall trainer client relationship, are we getting better or worse at this? That's a hard thing, a hard question to answer because uh, there may be a self selection bias of the trainers and coaches that we know through listening to our show. Because the ones that we talk to, seem to be pretty damn good at this. And they talk about this a lot, you know, but I don't know generally what that looks like across the, the training. The problem is a lot of trainers are trainers because mm -hmm. they have a lot of issues with exercise and diet themselves. And so what happens is you tend to project your, the things you hate about yourself onto the other person. So let's say you yourself are like, you hate the way you look. So you became a trainer and you're really obsessed with exercise and then you're training someone else and they screw up a couple of times. You may project, how you feel about yourself on them. How you, dare you get you, on there? You, you know? may, you yeah. almost always do. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you know. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you stick with that. Well, so, and this is why I proposed a question because in the last decade, we've created a whole new market of trainers that didn't even exist before. Mm -hmm. And the, this yeah. market of trainers predominantly are the trainers who had social media presence. They got incredibly, and maybe they, were tra they weren't even trainers before. They were just people who got in incredible shape, whether somebody no, impacted like, oh, their life or they got ripped yeah. or they got a lot of attention because of the way they look. And then they thought, man, so many people are asking me to help them. I should help them or I can make a business Isn't out of this. Isn't that interesting? Like uh, back in the day, it was the, the most jack guy in the gym. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they're just propelled out there mm -hmm. uh, through social media. They're like looked at as, as the guy that has all the answers. I mean, I would love to talk to a company like NASM and hear the statistics on how many of these mm -hmm. coaches and trainers are like, in person or like in facilities or are like Bro, online or like what can do they I tell you yeah. I was just got off the phone with them do you know you guys know what they have so one of the so we started working with NASM as partners because we met a couple of their representatives uh at the Arnold I'm sorry at the uh, Olympia and um uh we we've all we've of course we've been familiar with NASM for a long time it was the first certification all of us got back mm -hmm. in the day and they they're like the gold standard right of national certifications when we sat down and, and talked with these guys we had no idea of all the things that NASM now offers, including what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to pull it up just so I don't mess up. But they are not just like ahead of the curve. They are they they're they're leaders in this. So let me let me go over to it, what they have right now. So they have something called so trip off this. It's called NASM One. Okay, you pay a membership fee, thirty five bucks a month. Okay. What this and that's it's a year, so you pay thirty five a month for a year. Here's what you get: fifty percent off all the major certifications, so that already pays for itself. Oh, cool! There's cert, you get fifty percent off if you're a member. Then they have hundreds of CEU courses available through this, all available, unlimited for free. Wow! So you can go on there. What an interesting model, because okay, so that's four hundred twenty dollars a year. If you get fifty percent off of their certifications, most of their certifications are around a thousand dollars. Oh, it pays for itself. Yeah, that's a wow. So, so, so they have virtual co uh, courses that you could basically CEUs. Yeah, CEUs get credit for hundreds, or, hundreds, and you can and they're unlimited included with this. That's mm -hmm. smart. Okay, well, it gets crazier. So this is where I'm like, I'm on the phone with them, and I'm like, oh, you guys. First of all, this is crazy. Second of all, nobody knows about this, and they're like, that's why we're working with you guys. So I'm like, okay. So <laughs> they also have an app that comes with it. The app is designed to have you monitor and manage your business. Your tr your clients. Oh wow! Your their like, workouts, like trainerize their diets, their macros. It allows you to take payments. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Allows you to take payments. Yeah, like trainerize. You also can do wow. video conference calls with them. That's all included that. in this. All included. Wow! I'm surprised more certifications haven't done that. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a perfect fit. How, Thirty-five how, bucks a month. You know how, said, that, how brilliant? So yeah, listen, listen. How smart, will touch business that. wise, how smart this is. Okay, it's a no brainer because you basically save the money on the. The, what you would buy certification. And then they keep you in there because you have, you're managing all your clients there and yeah. you're and there. So you're competing with trainer eyes. And then on top of that, you're this certification course. They discounted enough to basically pay for itself. If you get, if you were thinking about getting one certification, you may as well do this because it's going to pay for itself. You also have now access to the CEUs, which keep them renewed, which would cost you money to go do those anyways. Like what a, yeah. Smart. By the wrap, way, wrap it all in. by the way, Smart. it's cheaper than all the other apps. That's just the app. Remember, forget the certificate, all the education they offer. Yeah. Yeah. 
35 bucks a month is cheaper than the other Super apps small. that you would use to do all that stuff. That's exciting. Yeah, that's cool. Right. Plus, ready for this? So at the end of the call, they're like, oh, oh, one more thing. No limit to the amount of clients you can manage in this app. Yeah. You know, the other, cert, the other ones you, are like, yeah. So you could build your online business, take payments, manage your clients, manage their schedule, manage their workouts, their diet. You could, uh, they have a, a, a library of exercises you could send them. Mm -hmm. You could do, they already have them. You know, it's, it's like, like it's, crazy. It's yeah. so exciting and unfortunate at the same time. Like, uh, you know, this is a little sharing a little bit more than the audience probably needs to know, but we have several friends, uh, outside of NASM that are building apps mm -hmm. that are basically going to do all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, when you have someone like that, like an NASM, this is why the app world's so scary to me. Yeah, I know. because what the, what our it's friends a of time. we have friends that are building really cool trainer type apps that, of course, been in conversation with us for some of them over over a couple of years, some of them recently, and it's very interesting to us. But then I see something like this, like How NASM. You, compete? you can't compete no, with them because no. they're going there for the education, anyways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so Makes so unfortunate sense. for our friends to see something like this, but really exciting. <laughs> well, for so when NASM. I got on, the, when I got great on the, for the user, right? That's yeah, and for the, the consumer, the right? Yeah. For the audience who's listening, who's a potential well, this client. Is, so this is why they're working with us because NASM has a problem of of the the space not knowing all the stuff that they have to offer. They kind of were relying on their the their laurels in the past and the fact that they were such a great national cert. And I think mm -hmm. that's all trainers and coaches, new trainers and coaches think that they are. Oh, it's a national cert. They're really good. Everybody says they're good. Yep. But no, no, no. If you look at the CEUs, there's all kinds of stuff you can learn in there. And then this app and this new service, 35 bucks a month. I mean, that's yeah. good luck. When I got off, the, I told them on, on the phone, I'm like, you guys just, you're going to crush everybody. With that. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to yeah. be able to touch Here you guys. Here comes the flood. Crazy. That's what I mean. If you're going to get a certification, that is, you save the money right in the first year. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's 100% oh, wow. no-brainer. Wow, that's super. Oh, yeah. Did that just go live? Is that How new is that? Relatively new. Yeah. Relatively new. Oh, there's so It's pulled, live right now. Here, you just pull it up. Doug yeah. pulled it up right now. It's called NASM1. Well, NASM1 membership. Yep. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And they're going to capture, I mean, like I said, I, I can't think of anybody that comes close. I can't to wait it. to hear. I bet we already have some trainers that are already in there then that yeah. uh, I want to hear some I, feedback. What I'm most curious about. Because Trainerize is probably, would you say, Justin, the most popular workout yeah, business most, yeah. coach mm -hmm. app? I'd like to hear somebody's uh, feedback that has utilized both and hear the comparison. Because I tell you what, if they can, if their if their UI is as good or better than theirs with all the other offerings that they're having right now, they're, I mean, talk about just taking over. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think Trainerize is much more expensive. It is. It's more. Honest. It's yeah. more expensive. Yeah. And I think Trainerize is based off of how many clients you have. So if That's right. I think it goes up as you manage more. It's been a long time since I've been through that app, so I'm not sure what I it know. is now. There's Yeah, and there's a few other there ones. It is right there, there. Oh, you also get unlimited retests. So if you need to take a retest on the cert, you, just keep, you, can, keep, you can keep learning. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's so true. much that I'm not even covering because there's so much there, uh, but I'm going to keep learning about what they, what they have to offer. Yeah, so look at all. Look at it, look at it. So it does go up as you go. That's Trainerize. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Grow yes. and then Pro Five and then Studio Plus. I'm not sure what Studio Plus yep. offers, but yep, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Anyway, I want to ask you guys. Uh, my, so my three year old, I've seen this happen now many times. He's only three, but he's genuinely like he flirts with. with like, <laughs> like, like he really likes girls. I think girls. Max does too. Yeah. 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 So it first, we started seeing it's this a with trip to see it happen in, at such a young age. Three. But it does. Yeah. Oh, so my daughter's friend, they're you know fourteen. Whenever she comes over, he acts so weird, and then he wants to make her laugh, and then he wants to tease her, and he wants to do all this stuff, and you know he goes up to hug her or whatever. And we saw that with her, right? Well, Doug came over for dinner last night, brought Bree, his daughter, over, <laughs> and there, my son, right away, just enamored by her. Oh, right <laughs> away, dude. Well, he's teasing her, right? Uh -huh. He's like. She's trying to mess with her and then he like touches her and then he goes over and he grabs her arm so that she'll, he like makes her like hug him, you know, and then she'll, he'll run. And, and if she laughs, then he's going to do whatever he did like 15 times in a row. And I'm like, oh my God, this yeah, is, yeah. this is hilarious. Why is he so flirty? He's, already, he's only three, dude. <laughs> It's so funny. That's so cute. Yeah, I, I Max is very similar like that. Yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, I love it, though. You know what I'm saying? He's just got this. One of the things I was afraid of was, you know, I had a, I had a boy in the middle of this COVID thing, right? And oh. It's a very important developmental ages, right, or stage of their life. And so I was – one of the things that I was uh, most fearful of, I guess you could say, when, when this was going on was – 
I told Katrina, I'm like, oh man, I hope that our son doesn't develop this kind of social awkwardness because at the ages that he's supposed to be interacting with people that he's not around them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, obviously that's not the case at all. Like I thought that, and Katrina always like said, come on, honey. You guys like, have such a big family too. Well, we have a big family and Katrina's like that literally like one of the things that her and I share in common is that trait, right? Is yeah. this like social butterfly, friends with lots of people, like not afraid to communicate, say how we feel and stuff like that. Like, so, She's like, he's got both of us in him. Like, do you really think that's possible? I, was like, I don't know. Like, I, like, this is a perfect example of, is this one of these like things that is more, you know, genetic or is it more a learned behavior with kids? Like, and he's the opposite of that. Like, he's like, knows everybody. And even when we lose school, but it's definitely girls. Like, he's like friends it's with- so the, funny. He's right? like, he gets along with other boys, like, because he's easy to get along with. Like, he doesn't fight for the toys. He's like, shares, the whatever. So, but I think that's also why the girls love him so much. And so when he leaves, I just picked him up from school the other day. It's so funny because <laughs> it's like, you know, they they have this, normally when I'm picking him up, they, they, this is when they kind of have their outside recess time and, and they, they mix two or three classes because his class is very small, right? Only 17 kids. But then during the recess time, there's, they have like three different classes. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like 40 kids or, or so are out there. And when I, when I leave, it's like all the girls come running up to the fence. Bye, Max. Like out of their <laughs> way to say Oh, yeah. Bye. And he's, like, oh, bye. Dude, Walking over, touching their hands to the fans. No, he's not. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah. and I just stand there he's and let him do it. Fan base. Yeah, I don't even like interrupt it. I just let him do his thing. Each girl comes over and, bye, Max. Bye, Max. You know, it's so funny. I'm that's, like, oh, my that's God. Rad. Such a weird thing, too, to be like, as a dead, like, all well, you're, proud. You're living my yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, boy. He's going to be just fine. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. The moms of the kids are like, who's this? Max? Yeah. And then this, they, oh, that's his dad? Who's oh. this Max guy? <laughs> oh, I see. We that's see his dad. No, dude, it's it's really cool to see. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I got something for you guys, speaking of Max and our boys and stuff, that I, I'm sure you guys have experienced. So uh, I think it was Saturday morning. This isn't often that this happens when, like, both Katrina and I are just really tired in the morning and, you know, Max is, like, awake, right? And so he's not this age where we can be like, hey, turn on some cartoons or, you know, uh -huh. go get yourself some banana, like, <laughs> send him away to do this, stuff like that. And I'm like, Katrina's got her eye mask on. I'm, like, in and out, have a sleep. And he's, like, up talking and doing this stuff like that. And I'm hungry. Katrina's like, go downstairs. Go get yourself a banana, right? Yeah. So he goes downstairs, feeds himself a banana, comes back up. And she, he's moving around. I could tell. And she's like, Max, I can tell you have to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Okay, so he gets up and he goes run to the bathroom and he comes back and it, and you hear, and he goes, "Mommy, my wiener wouldn't go down." Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can't help but you're laying there half asleep, go like, "Fuck, I don't even want to get up and no, go see no. what this bathroom looks like yeah. right now." You know, what I'm <laughs> just picturing him trying to pee in the toilet. You know what I'm saying? Because he's really good. Like he st like he stands and he's actually most times really, really good. But I know if that thing's you know yeah. fully erect, no, it's, no, you, bo it's going boner piss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, worse, it's it's going. Yeah. Hey, even Dad has a hard time controlling that. Yeah. One, you know what I'm saying? Like so, More I know. There's no way rough, he's he's controlling one. that. It's all over the place. So <laughs> I'm just laying there in bed. I know Katrina and I both think, like, God, man, who's going to get up and go check yeah. out? Did he miss? Yeah. Oh, of course he did. It was That's everywhere. All, yeah. 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 all over. The, I mean, he got some of it in the toilet, but most of it was everywhere Poor else. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, boys. So I laugh at yeah. You what can't be do? mad at him. You know what I'm no, saying? No. That's a real real thing. That's boys. What are you doing, boys? You know, the other thing that was interesting for me for this weekend was you know, we're getting used to this new schedule for us, right? And one of the things I've loved about it is it's freed up some time to get into other pieces of the business. And and I think that's a thing that I've definitely gone back and forth with Doug and talked about how much we appreciate the recording schedule the way it is now. And uh, it's and it, something I did this weekend that I just didn't realize I really haven't done much of in a long time, which is like engage on social media oh, and yeah. YouTube and uh -huh. look at the and read com like, bro, so fucking unhealthy. Yeah. Like it ruined my day. It really was like, I, I, I it was doing it because I'm like, oh, yeah. I should Post do this. Posting ghost, man. I yeah, I need, I need to do this. Like, I, you know, it's been Very a while unhealthy. since I've like checked up on how things are trending on on each platform and comment on comments. And like, and I was just like, I, I caught myself at one, not only getting sucked into it for a couple hours, uh. but then afterwards just feeling, it was just in a bad mood all day. And I'm like, God, yeah, so unhealthy, man. Well, real Toxic. life has checks and balances. Like if you're in a room and you, and you hear someone make a comment, you're like, I don't like that. You got to do, you got to walk up to them. Mm -hmm. You got to like, okay, are they going to, are they going to react to me saying this? There's other people around and eh, I think I'll keep it to myself. Social media you just say whatever the hell you want and you're fine. And so what ends up happening is, and then, and then the worse your comment is, the more attention it gets. 
So it feeds into that antisocial behavior. And you don't even know if it's a real person. Yeah. It, yeah. it could you know how many times very it, well be a bot. You know how many times it happens to me? Where it's, I'll, they'll make a comment on something. I'll go look and be like, no followers? Yeah. Or you just got created? This is yeah. fake. Yeah. This yeah. is a totally Russian bot. Half the, time, it, it, half the time, it's someone trolling. The other half of the time, it's somebody who's just being sarcastic or funny. And then oh, they're, yeah. they're really but not, not in a bad mood. <laughs> yeah. Now, but it's like, I, 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 I can't seem, and I get like, because uh, of course, a lot of everybody who's, who is in the game of like helping other people build social media, they talk about the importance of engaging and, and posting and all the things like that. But man, I can't tell you what uh, how unhealthy it could be. The original growth of the business, not so bad. When we were unknown and we were yeah. putting content out and you know, people were engaging and and the conversations were all healthy and helping people. It was like it actually didn't feel that way. Back in fact, I actually felt almost fed from it. Like, wow, this was like, man, I helped like 10 people oh, today man. out. And mm -hmm. so n the compliments they give you for the content you were producing. What were people saying that was making so upset? Oh man, that Jen Cohen post. Oh, I told, went, I oh, knew it. I knew man, it. Man, that, uh, th that thing went. You know why? I, this is what I said to you. I just read a few. This is what I said to you. It, it, because the clip itself outside of the conversation, I yeah. knew the way she said it would rub a lot of people the wrong way. I believe women need to have a man in their life who is better than them, who is more successful than them, who is richer than them, who is more athletic than them. You have to have that type of situation or else the woman loses respect or loses attraction. I don't believe this thing where it's like, oh yeah, I'm a girl who has, I'm smart, I'm pretty, I'm successful, and I want to be with a guy who is less than that, who is less successful, who has less money, who is less fit than I am. If a woman is too bold or a woman is too aggressive, they come across too mad. Masculine. That's why a lot of very successful women are single and mm. can't find men because when they have success and they have a stronger personality, it takes sometimes away from the femininity and then like it becomes very combative with male energy. Mm. Like how can you be assertive and ambitious but also keep your femininity. Like, no, no, no. I, what I mean, normally happens with a woman that has a very strong personality like you, she bulldozes most men and the only <laughs> and, and and then marries a guy. No, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Marries a guy. Which also, it's also builds resentment. Right. Who is, who's ends up being passive and whatever yeah. like that. And he takes on all the feminine ener energy like that. It takes a very special partner to be able to navigate that. I yeah. Well, I mean, now, it's... Now, what she said objectively, uh, the, the data supports it, but the way she said it, and, I, and without context, I knew that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to mm -hmm. piss off a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even know. I, I mean, so, so the audience, so it's not like any of us actually have anything to do with those. Like, we have a team of people that, yeah. and their job is to make clips go viral, right? Or get a lot of traction. So yeah. that's- and, and create discussion. And that's what the caption said. Yeah. What are your, what's your opinion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but man, to see just the, how angry people are. Now, to your point, and I agree, like- you know, I, I like went back and obviously listened to it several times. It's like she opens up with strong statements like women need or have to have. Like, yeah. Okay. Doesn't even matter what follows after that. Yeah. You're, I, I don't even, yeah. and I don't even care that a woman, a, another woman is saying yeah. it. You're fucked. Like, yeah, you just yeah, can't yeah. say that. Yeah. You just can't say need or have to have a, yeah. like something so absolute. Yep. Because there are always exceptions to the rule. But, what her, who, and we all know Jen really well, right? And the, and the irony of, I mean, talk about like one of the strongest women we know. Yeah. Like yeah. think of all the women that we uh, we know personally oh, yeah. and think of like Jen is one of the strongest, most athletic, one of the smartest, yeah. highest business acumens. Yeah. Like, I but mean, also she's, very down to earth, authentic. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. So she's just a killer, right? And so just to see all these other women crucifying her because of that statement, I just was like, I, I don't know. I just felt compelled to come to her defense because yeah. I, 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 I don't really care sometimes when we get we get that for for guests that I'm whatever. Well, but when I have a guest that I really like and I know where she's coming from, you want to defend her. I want to defend yeah. her, you know. And yeah. so I caught myself in that of wanting to come to her rescue. On listen, like first of all, it was an hour and a half, two hour long podcast where there was we talked about the nuances. Right, mm -hmm. the conversation went on for another two or three minutes. Yeah, uh, and yeah, she made a very bold. Which, by the way, that's on brand for her. Yeah. Say something <laughs> yeah, right. bold like that, um, and I don't disagree with it. I mean, I I agree with the way it was said, or I don't agree with the way it was said in that clip. But her 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 the general point of because if she would have just switched need or have to have to want, yeah. how could you argue that? Name me and, and that some of the women that were going back and forth with me. I asked, like, wait a second, like, do you not want a man that's stronger than you? Do you not want a man that can provide for you? Yeah. Like, do you know any women that say like? 
I don't, I don't want that, or I don't need, like, maybe they say they don't well, there, need that. There may be some, but generally speaking, again, if we just step back, like yeah. take your opinion out of it, the data shows that uh, women tend to seek men that either earn as much or more, that tend to have the same education or higher, that tend to be the same height or, or taller, um, or they'll date someone with that potential. Because you'll see a woman who'll say, well, I married my husband and he had nothing. He was going through school. I was like, okay, what was he going to school for? What did he become? Or whatever. It was that potential that you were seeking. Now you can make arguments for why is, you know, is evolutionary or whatever, but it's just true. And I, I was even talking about this with my wife and I said, you know, imagine going on a date with a guy and you really like him. And then you ask him what he does for a living. And he goes, oh, I flip burgers at so-and-so. And I really have no intentions of whatever. You're probably, your interest in him is going to drop considerably. That's just tends to happen. For men, it doesn't affect this as much. Like you could meet the girl that flips burgers, be really attracted to her, go out with her and not be like, oh, she just does that. It's not as important necessarily. Other things are important, generally speaking, but there's always, uh, you know, there's, everybody's an individual. Mm -hmm. But the way she said it, the way she said it was, you know, better than, and they have to, and that kind of stuff. That, that's that's Yeah, but I, I mean, I also think that part of the I mean, the people that we're trying to counter so hard on her is is part of the the problem with, with, with the things that we're, you're seeing right now, the, the rise in women that are childless. And then, of course, I said that and they pissed everybody off too. It's just like, oh, what if but, we're choosing that? It's like, okay, well, that's fine. But if all the women chose not to have children, we don't exist anymore. So yeah. it's kind of an important thing that we care a little bit about that. Maybe you don't personally, that's yeah. fine. But it's like, it's an important thing for society for us to reproduce. And that's the main reason why yeah. we're here is to be able to do that. Yeah. So whether you choose to or not, that's- Well, women are an interesting um, conundrum because- in order to be self, like to self, to support yourself and be a professional, in the sense that you you have like you bring a lot of value to the market, you get educated, so you're like, okay, I can take care of myself just in case I don't have another partner, no one needs to take care of me, take care of myself. That takes a long time, right? That traditionally it does. Traditionally it means you go to school, then you go to college, then you go, you know, a more maybe advanced degree, then you go get a job, you get some experience, but then you bump up against a uh, biological time limit which is, uh-oh, if you don't have kids by this time, you're not going to either be able to have kids or it's going to be real hard. Men don't have that, that, that limit. So men can go and not feel that pressure where you'll hear this from a lot of women. Like I used to train a lot of female professionals and they would tell me like, oh, I, you know, I remember when I turned this age, all of a sudden I was like, uh-oh, I need to find a partner because I have like four years left to, in order to have kids. Men don't think that way necessarily because we don't have that biological limit or limiter. So there's a, there's a whole different pressure, um, that's set up that I think, uh, especially with modern society, like it's almost like, how do I choose the right route? And then where do I go? And where do I find these, these people to date that are going to, it's challenging anyway. I just, I I, it's I, complex. It, it turned, sure. it turned the conversation into like this, uh, you know, equality argument of like, are you saying that you're, you're better than your wife? It's like, well, I am better than my wife in some things and she's much better than me in other things. In fact, she's probably better than me in a lot more things than I'm better than her at. That, that makes that's, you a good team as well. I, I mean, that's exactly, but this idea of like, we're going to be equal in everything is ridiculous. That is the silliest thing ever to think that you're going to have. Just think of it from a business perspective. Think of a business want, team, life, like you're, oh, you're going to have all these equal attributes. Like, no. And, and then just to, to distill it further, it's like the point that she's making is around uh, finances and physical strength. Two things that as a man, I want to be able to do. Yeah. I want to be able to provide for my wife. In today's context, mm -hmm. that's financial. That's right. what that means, what she meant by that. Like, it's like uh, back in times, it was that I would literally be able to go hunt, right? I'd be able to go hunt and go kill the animal, bring it back so we could feed feed my family. In today's time, that's money. Yeah. That's going Thankfully, to get- it doesn't mean hunting because I don't know how to hunt. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's right. I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, you and I would get crushed back in back in time. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, I like to believe that when 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 uh you know uh, you know deer and, and and animals that you would hunt was the the most important commodity you, you wouldn't be driving to collect jewels you know, no, you know no. like we've we've adapted to to modern oh, time course, know, like and that's that's yeah. it's the same thing i would learn to hunt if i had to and then the same thing time. for for the protect side like i mean uh, absolutely i want to be in a in a physical place to be able to Protect my wife. And Forget about the who's 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 stronger aspect. The, in, in you know who knows what the future will look like. Although this that's a whole other discussion. When you're carrying a child and then you're breastfeeding a child, you are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It only it of course you would want to be with a partner who doesn't ha have to worry about that to be like, hey, look, I got this because you right now 
you, you're, you know, you're thrown up because of morning sickness or you're, you 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 know, you can't run very fast because you're pregnant or you got to feed the baby all the time. Like you do that. And I'm going to go, I, I got to go find us some food. So biologically it makes sense that that's evolutionarily, I should say, uh, where it came from. So you, but it's weird, this argument, I, how well, people get so triggered by it. I, yeah. I just think conversations like this, I, like, I appreciate people that can speak uh, away from cultural norms, you know, in terms of like bringing a different perspective in, you don't have to agree with uh, whatever their opinion is or what their thoughts are yeah. around it. If it's working for them, why is it working for them? That's you know, right, and like, yeah. it, it's just like, and she's just cares? bringing up something that's a dynamic that's working for her. And it's like to get vitriol and hate for like something that uh, is working for it. It seems weird. It tells yeah. you a lot though. When people, when things get tr trigger people so yeah. much, it's trying try to control about, and well, cultivate I wasn't gonna, everybody. I wasn't going to go way. there. I wasn't yeah. going to go. Like if you go searching the people that were arguing with me, uh, yeah, right. go through their profile and just go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. It's you who's arguing with me. Uh, you know, so very predictable that you could see uh, who was going to get so angry there, about a comment like I that. Think right and by the way, like I had some really good, discussions with some some women on there that disagreed with it and and i don't know if you saw my comments mm -hmm. so that i said I, I absolutely can take that criticism I, I i agree with the point you're making like she definitely could have worded that differently like yeah. because she said need and have to have of course mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but i i understand her general point and so i agree with her general point do i think and and i guess being somebody who who doesn't always articulate my points the best i could i, I have i tend to be like that i have also I think a, a lot more uh, empathy grace, for somebody yeah. or grace who says like something like that passionately. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, I know where she's coming from. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I just, so there's, there's that part of me that's defending her because of that. And it's just like, and then I'll, you, and then if I reflect even more, I also know this is a very, and probably what, what got me engaged is this is a, a conversation at our household. My wife comes from a matriarch. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest challenges is, is to be finding those, those that roles, balance. that balance and those roles in the household, especially when she comes from a, such a strong matriarch that her mother taught her, like, you do not need a man. In mm -hmm. fact, one of the first things that Katrina used to always say to me was that I love you, but I don't need you. That's something that of course we've evolved and changed in the relationship. And she's now looked back and reflects and goes like, I'm so sorry. I used to say that to you. That's like, that's not the right thing at I all. I get where it comes from though. I, you know so do I, mean? I. Yeah, and that's yeah. why it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me. It didn't, it didn't bother me that she used to say that, but but that's how what, how much conditioning that she's had you know, in that direction. You know what's interesting so. about that? I get where it comes from, by the way, because you don't want to be that person that's insecure. You need the external validation, man or woman. Mm. But also the flip side, all people need people. Yes, we we are not <laughs> exactly. We are we are so we're social creatures. We don't that's do well by ourselves. That's what science said. Religion, which is a spiritual wisdom size, says we need each other. I mean, isolate yourself by yourself, and you will suffer the consequences. Yep. That's it's yep. just period end of story. So, like everybody need we need people. You know, I need you guys. Oh, I, I, I one hundred percent recognize mm -hmm. that I need. I, I'm not who I am today. I ha I don't have the success I've had today, both physically, financially, all the above. If I don't have her, hundred percent, hundred, hundred. And in our household, I agree. too. I don't think you would either. And even though I have very, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. I text her all the time. Yeah, for Thank sure. Thank God for you. Thank God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, even though we, I, I think we yeah. tend to run our house in a in a, a very traditional type fashion. It doesn't mean that there's not roles that are switched up. I mean, yeah. I do most of the house cleaning and dishes. Okay, so yeah. it's. Not like we're like this where I'm just like, well, you, you know cook why? and clean, you stay in the kitchen, yeah, but you know, I do this. You know why? Because like, you're better at it. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I, no, yeah. you're right. Uh -huh. And I care more about it, right? Because that's what that's ten, That's what has, has driven us to divide and conquer in our house. Yes. It's not, this is the role for a man. This is the role yeah. for a woman. Better at, hey, you're better at this. Mm -hmm. I'm better at this. Yeah. Like you focus on that, I'll focus on this. And, it, and that is what has tended to work out. Now, what is interesting is it tends to fall on these kind of, traditional roles most of the time yeah. doesn't mean there's not an exception to the rule and it's not like i don't have friends who have a flip situation where the woman is actually out there making most of the bread and then the husband is doing other things and supporting the house i think that can work of course i think it has to be that way and but it's this idea that man if someone says something like that that we it was, just, it was just a clip that's social media is designed for that isn't yeah. it just yeah. short clips like uh, yeah. no context well, that's the other part that's really challenging, right? Yeah. As a as a brand or as a business, it's like part of this, you know, and that was the argument I was having with you off air was, you know, you're like, ah, it's not the greatest representation of our brand because we don't necessarily agree with all that. And I'm like, well, yeah, not with the way it was said, but yeah. we agree with the sentiment. 
behind it. And I'm like, but that's also, we have a team of people that we pay and their job is to clip out things. Well, here's the beauty. That we have, will get we, more. We have a podcast. We can talk about it. Yeah. Afterwards. Well, that's yeah, what I love about it. What I love about it is that we can, it. we can put something out like that and then we can explain the context. That's so right. now explain to me this. Okay. So the um, Super Bowl happened not too long ago. And I found out, I don't know if this is a true story or not, but I was like, this guy has to be the most brilliant guy ever, right? He he was one of the streakers that was out there. He bet ahead of time that there would be a streaker in Vegas, $50,000, and ends up like getting arrested, makes bail. I forget, it was like 17000 or something he had to pay for bail, but then made like $175,000. Wait, he, wait, can you do that? I don't know. I don't know if that's like so. I know possible. that. Okay, so that's kind of when I was illegal. like, oh, the, the, brilliant. The the Super Bowl has the most prop bets than any other game ever. Like in the in like, and so I do know there's a ton of prop bets that you could potentially get. I didn't know that was a prop bet. Uh, that there'll be a streak, but I wouldn't be surprised. Be I mean, they, but you know, they yeah. bet on the length so of the lot. national anthem, right? Because you don't know who's going to sing it. So, and some people sing it slow, and some people sing it fast. Wait, but uh -huh. that's got to be illegal. He bet that there'd be a streak. I know and he was the streaker. Yeah, and he was the streaker. <laughs> I know <laughs> he's a Florida guy. Came if, to the. To, if uh, that's not illegal, there's a loophole there that I think people would take. I think they're of. gonna. <laughs> yeah. If they hadn't like you, you know put any parameters around it, I'm sure there's. Are you looking it up right now, Doug, to see if yeah, I'm trying to find it because I didn't know that was. I know there's. A lot of now that you said that, crazy though, prop bets. how would they know that you wouldn't have your friend do it? What if you and your friend went in on it? Yeah, I'm bet a hundred bucks. Exactly, I'll go, you'll go to jail. I'll bail you out. And yeah, also, maybe you came clean about it later after you won the money, right? But nobody knew that he actually wow. did that. I did not hear okay, that. Okay, I found it. Okay, okay. Let's so hear. according to LA Times, the offshore betting site never paid the amount to the guy because he admitted the betting uh. scheme during an interview and it went viral. What well, they didn't dummy. pay him. What an idiot! What a dummy and for admitting that. He Why would he turn from the smartest guy to the dumb? Dumbest, dumbest guy. guy. <laughs> well, wow. One conversation. He wow. paid $40,000 for front row seats to pull this off. He he paid 40000 yeah. for front row seats. Okay. Actually, if you think about it, you'd have the Well, truth. if he's up, if he hit one fifty, forty thousand 40000 plus the bail, he's still up. Big he's time. He's still up. But I mean, but what not a, much. Yeah. But then what, he a, what a dumb dumb that's to so, say something. Yeah, that's so Super stupid. Dumb. At least get the money in your pocket. I don't even know if I'd say anything <laughs> yeah. afterwards. Yeah. No, don't that's ever like, say anything. Like, yeah, that's like you, like you just, you found a hack. Yeah. Like, you made on. your money. Tell your close friends. Yeah. Oh, hey, remember that thing? Yeah, that'd be cool. I, did I, I told you guys off air. I don't know if I talked about it on air with you guys. Did I tell you? That there's like there's a there's now AI apps and stuff like that for that are hacking some of these betting apps. Yeah. yeah that like. Oh, really? And they'll work up the the odds. And yes. Then, yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 I didn't, even, that I didn't market. even know that. I didn't even know that existed. Maybe that was the mm. stock market too. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? They do, yeah, lightning fast. Uh, you know, uh, predictive buys and algorithms. Sells. Yep, and, and they'll catch they'll catch the rhythm of something and sell, sell, sell. So you have this massive selling. But now I think that they have limits on it. How right. accurate are those? Yeah, like well, they have they software to, to to combat it, right? That's, There's software that can pick yeah. it up and see, at least on the betting side. So I imagine, of course, they would have that for. Yeah. Dude, I got I got to tell you guys, I watched. Uh, Probably one of my favorite movies of all time this weekend. You watched yes. Dune Two also. It, it's and I'm there with you, bro. Like I was in epic. Doug and I in. were scheduled to go see it, and then you guys sent that. And we're like, oh, we're not going to go now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they always invalidate our hey, suggestions. Doug and I were all booked to go. They're like, oh my god, favorite. No, movie no, no. Ever read the, read like the reviews on it. No. It yeah, was. No, I've I've epic. I've heard I've heard from everybody phenomenal. That seen it, said was, it was, was an the word incredible I, movie. I, okay, shows. the reviews got incredible reviews. Like. It looks sick. Do you know how hard it is to embed a uh, culture, mm -hmm. religion, fantasy, sci-fi, make it seem realistic, make it seem like uh, it, it just like combines so many of these elements. There's like a scientific it, way to explain all of this magic sorcery, yes. like the whole thing. It, like everything actually made sense. I think that's the hardest thing to nail with sci-fi or any kind of like yes yeah futuristic type and, of and the and the religion story. that they put in there the religious undertones and then like the, the like how the empire you know, it just it was Dude, so the, epic the Bene Gesserit is it, it, it's like so uh parallel to what you would think if somebody was masterminding everything yeah. in the world like they they portray it through the Bene Gesserit like so well yeah it was yeah, really good I, I went by myself <laughs> I went to the isn't it interesting myself. how it's a gangster isn't, move. isn't it interesting how there tends to be the spectrum of movies that go like crazy like that you either have um it's so not believable okay so like x-men like yeah. marvel type bullshit that's like not believable over the top 
And then you have like part of why you guys say it's, and I agree with this. Like, so I, we rewatched some old movies this, this last weekend or whatever that, and Fugitive was one of them. Mm. And I was like breaking down to Katrina, why I, other than the great acting by Harrison Ford, so that why I think it, it did so well. And I said, you know what? When you think of a movie, like they normally make that character, Harrison Ford, if he's the guy who breaks out of jail and like is running, like they make him like Jason Bourne. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. He also knows jujitsu and he can take <laughs> on five cops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He jumps out of helicopters, uh -huh. but he's not. He's like just a, a, a smart doctor yeah. husband who's running for his life and he's struggling the whole way through it. I'm like, they make it realistic. Like you actually can see yourself in that character and go like, yeah, there's enough drama there to portray. It's like, yes. it's gonna, it's gonna well, carry so, and, you. And I'm like, when have you seen that, this a type of character like that in a movie get portrayed like that? He's normally superhuman. You know what well, I'm saying? So, so with Dune, totally. the, the thing that I think captured me the most was the different cultures and how well they presented each culture, mm -hmm. how different they were and how they didn't hammer you with it with over explanations. They just went about their business. They just and, blended them. And, and like as you watched, yeah, you could clash. Yeah, like the Fremen have their culture. Mm -hmm. People, the, the Harkonnens have their culture, very distinct, and the way that they communicate and the way that they act. And it was, it was, it's one of those movies I'm gonna watch again and again. So it's sure. cool. And, and you know, you've seen, even in the first one, they kind of went over the technology of vibration and yeah. how that kind of opens up and moves around the sand. And it, it makes a lot of logical sense. Well, uh, so do you, have you ever heard of like worm grunting no. before? Uh -uh. Okay. So I, there's this, these two guys, I saw some like documentary about this a, a long time ago, but uh, they're like earthworm farmers. And so they would go into like the swamps and they would place like this wooden stake into the ground and they would take like one of these like metal files and just kind of grind it on top of the stump or on, on top of the stake and it would send this like weird grunting vibration into the ground. He's like, rrr, rrr, in a certain way they would do it. Um, all of a sudden, like all the worms would come to the surface. Oh, wow. And it was like, like whoa, like everybody was tripping out because it was so easy for them to like harvest all these worms instead of the old traditions where you'd have to like dig and like. Makes you wonder who came, how did they I know, discover who, this? Who, who came who, up with that? Yeah. Who thought of that? That's so know. wild to me. Like who? Some dude was just playing with a stick. Like what? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Keep doing that. Yeah. Look at all these worms coming up. But it's just like, I don't know. You see kind of like uh, some some parallels to that, you know, in the movie and stuff. But I was just like, I like how it's it's believable. Like there yeah. was like, you know, real ways that uh, to like, with, uh, anyway, I don't want to like spoil the movie for people. But Yeah, yeah. Don't, I haven't yeah. seen it yet, so don't ruin it for me. Oh, so that's I, really, oh I, we got, I, we got I, to make a correction before I forget. We got something wrong. We've got no, no. You got something wrong. I hey, don't, don't throw me in this. Rule of thumb: you got it wrong. <laughs> hey, and I and I asked. We're a team here. I, yeah, Look, I, all of a sudden, I asked again about it. it was, I repeated it because all I was a sudden, Boondock Saints You blame watcher. it on me. We're a team. <laughs> I still, what you say, I hey, own. I was telling Doug, I'm like, what bad timing? The Jin Cohen clip yeah. goes, and then you talking about using a stick to beat women. Is no, like that's, not what, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> Rule of thumb is not, I didn't know it was a myth. It yeah. was not based off of an old rule. So where, you could hit your wife with a stick so long as it wasn't thicker than your thumb. That's made up. That's not real. Yeah. Rule of thumb, because it was a measurement, a unit of measurement for uh, like measuring grain or whatever, because well, it's typically about an whatever. inch long. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. I, I wonder who made up that one about. Well, somebody said Boondock Saints said uh, it, which is probably where you got it from. Oh, wow. And well, yeah, before, it was some internet. like tough. You know, labor uh, lady that brought that up is like a sort of a, a, and you a knock on that. And you believe it. You're like, oh, God. Yeah, well, it was okay. so convincing. I, I don't know. I feel like that was probably in the Wikipedia or, you know, like it was in on the internet somewhere before that. <laughs> Dude. You There's know, somebody, somebody on said it. Say everything's is, on the internet. <laughs> hey, right? Hey, I wonder how well, it's it just come from nowhere. All of you guys have seen Boondock Saints. I'm sure it came yeah, from so that. It says, uh, it's, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but we're... Where did it originate? I don't think it originated. In that no, uh, what did that say? Sir Francis Bueller is reported as having made this legal ruling. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. It's not about the stick. What does that say? It is. No, oh, this has been said. See, in the in the internet, we'll lie to you half See? the time. Yeah. That's it's not I mean. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not true. Is it? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't think it's true. I've okay. done some research as well. This is all yeah. pre reddit I, I think days it's a too. myth. Like, I don't know, man. Listen, but I wonder how many things we believe to be true yeah. that went viral before the internet. You know what I mean? Like blowing the Nintendo cartridge and That's shit like true. that. That's still true. I'm convinced. Yeah. It's not. They say Bro, I, re I have a new, I brought a Nintendo again, right? And I could mess with it all day long. I've blown that circle. It works. Did I send That's you guys? The, who's the one that sent the meme with the Nintendo cartridges talking? Is that you? <laughs> yeah. One yeah. of the Nintendo cartridges like, 
bro, trust me. Scra uh, scrape yourself with a penny. He's like, why? He's like, just trust me. He does Easy. it. And then later the guy's blowing in him. He's like, Easy. oh. <laughs> Like, you're Bro. Love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were things like I'm trying to think of what else we we thought uh there, you know things that were viral that we believed. They'll come to me. Mm -hmm. But I I never challenged them because I just thought them to be true. Yeah, yeah. I'm so I, that annoyed. one was pretty funny that that one came because yeah, a lot of urban legends. I'm so annoyed kind of, about that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so who was Emerge. it that was talking about the potatoes from Butcher Box? Oh, that's that me. You? So I got so one of our one of our favorite dishes right now, and I didn't know that Butcher Box had this. I didn't even know that this uh, came from her or came from them. Uh, <clears throat> Katrina normally does the potatoes when I grill um, grill the meat, and we have this like she does this like garlic and uh, cheese. Justin, you would love it. Just a little mm, bit of cheese yeah, and it melts and bakes in the oven with like the small potatoes and uh, that's kind of been like our staple and she had these other ones that she did in the air fryer uh, this last time and i'm like oh my god these are so good she's like oh they're from butcher box and i was like potatoes what? yeah yeah I'll show. so i actually i took a picture because i knew that the next time we had a commercial that i would bring them up because they were so good are they prepped they're already done you just reheat them basically oh. huh. so we just threw so i think there it says i even think on the box it actually tells you like i think i sent it to the executive doug did i send it to the executive thread yeah you did let me pull it up so i didn't i didn't know one that they work with this brand because this brand is actually the same brand that we get the other potatoes that we do the the cheese and stuff with so rosemary and then sea salt has like chicken drippings on it and it's fully cooked already. You just it takes fifteen minutes to reheat it. We did it in the air fryer to make them kind of crispy. Yeah, so good. Butcher Box has a lot of. I have to check again. They have a lot of those add-ons that they'll come and go, and and <clears throat> you'll find all kinds of. I don't think this is this. I believe this is the same company that does the uh, already pre-made mix that I do the make the burritos with the potatoes and everything like that. Yeah, I believe so. They actually uh, have like bone broth as well. You can buy at. Like Whole Foods, it's a really good company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you looking at the brand right now that I sent over? Because yeah, I think I, that's. A, I don't think it's it. a butcher box brand. It it's is, a, they partnered with an, uh, another company. It's right? Rolly Roti. I don't think yeah. Butcher Box uh, is a brand that makes any any of their well do, the, 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 their chicken nuggets. Those are Butcher Box, aren't they? Yeah, they, they have oh, yeah. their brand on yeah, some. Yeah, of their they have packaging. their brand on stuff. I mean, the which meat. by the way, we still eat like crazy. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. those, we eat those as adults. We just yeah. eat chicken. No, nuggets that's that that I don't even like, care. It's a stereotype with me, dude. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in, dude. You know, I, you know, what's funny is that I eat them with grapes. We have to. We <laughs> we consistently have those now. Yeah. And I, it was a, it, this is a little while back. It hasn't been that. It's been it's been a while now. But I went through. Uh, McDonald's with Max and I got like some Nick chicken nuggets like on the go we were driving somewhere and I'm like oh let's get some of those I was hungry really it's really more about me and I was like I'll share with him and so different processed oh hell. my god so it's different I mean I knew that obviously because yeah. I've been eating it but it's been so long since I've actually had a chicken McNugget from McDonald's that you don't really tell the it's so interesting isn't it interesting how our palate yeah. gets conditioned yes. well if you eat it enough then it's like you oh crave yeah it, right? then i would it's probably like, crave can you McDonald's taste one. how processed it is though? oh yeah it's crazy it doesn't eat if you have been eating the 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 butcher box ones and then you go introduce the mcdonald's one you won't even like no, it no, you won't yeah, it's night and day but i do know what you're saying yeah. because that's i've seen that happen before where i consistently eat something that's like eh, not that good and then all of a sudden i, I remember crave. when i first learned that uh oh, what are the pringles that Pringles potato chips were not were process were were processed potato chips. Yeah, it's I don't like powdered like uh, it's not even like like sliced no potato or no it's not sliced off potatoes and fried. Yeah, it's yeah. powdered potato. They powdered pre potato. obviously yeah. So I, I remember <laughs> perfect. I didn't know that. I had a friend who was eating them and I'm eating them like they taste different than regular yeah. potato chips. And then the mo their mom is like, well, these are like processed. I'm like, what yeah, I doing? didn't really know what that entailed. Yeah, you know? and then I'm like, oh, duh, they all fit perfectly together on top yeah. of each now, other. Now, are there do other chips do that? I mean, or I would think that like Doritos are super processed assume, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. like uh, well, Doritos are made with corn, so that's corn mashed together and then pressed into shapes. Okay. Regular potato chips are just like sliced Lay's. off the potato. Are Lay's really truly yes. sliced? Or yes. they no, they're, they're sliced. They yeah, are. And they yeah. just get fried. So Pringles is the only one that that went that route. The one that I know of, yeah. where they take I'm potato sure, like, flakes, ruffles, or something else, where they make shapes out of them. Uh, no, assume. ruffles are sliced too. Are they? They just use a slicer that slices them. Oh, uh, interesting. In that, in Have that. you ever, has anyone ever uh, counted the Pringles to compare to like a, a regular bag of chips? Is it more or less? Good question. <sighs> it's, it's probably more, right? Because it's so packed in there. I don't uh, know. That's what I'm, I mean, you would think if it was more, that'd be a great marketing strategy. Like I would do, I would use that as like a, a strategy yeah. of like, oh, we give you 20% more liked, chips. I never liked Pringles. I never did. I was. Were they inspired by uh, tennis balls? Oh, the can. Yeah, right? It's like the same can, I swear. 
and then they, there's always that much room in between that's like compressed did you guys air. did you guys like that was it satisfying to you as well to open a can of 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 the uh uh tennis balls where yeah. Sh- uh, yeah. it comes out yeah oh, that's great it was but a hundred it's a hundred chips in one can of pringles mm. yeah so um that, that okay. can't be more yeah that's probably less let's that- go I know. Well, you think about a bag of like Lay's chips, though. There's so much space in between. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's like fifty yeah. percent air. We get yeah. You open it. <laughs> <laughs> that protects the chips, everybody. Is that is that right? Yeah, you want air in there. Is that is that the thought process behind that? Is that that's supposed to protect the chips? Is that what they say? I don't know. Yeah, it's probably more of a marketing. Maybe. Thing. <laughs> is it like they tell fun? guys like you that? Though, makes we're, trying, we're looking out for you. We get so bamboozled. Protecting your. We're protecting Dude, you, your chips. Well, have you ever seen like uh, all the different types of glassware and things? Like how they just like use angles and things to reduce the amount of volume like crazy like like rocks glasses like all like for bars and oh like they give they make- you so much less volume just because it's like tapered in or it's like the, uh, you know it's just it's it's funny because they use like optical illusion like that and their benefits oh, so a bag of ruffles an eight and a half uh, ounce bag of ruffles is 121 chips oh. lays so you get an eight ounce bag of lays is 150. You're getting ripped oh, off. Wow. Pringles. Yeah, well, Pringles is 5.2 ounces. Oh, so it's a they smaller can. That's why they're not marketed. So it's more compact. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, how, but what's the price? So is I it, have no is idea. It similar in price, Andrew? Yeah. Or are they like, so a Lay's, a Lay's eight ounce bag. By the way, none of these sponsor the show. I just want you yeah, guys to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm I mean, just we can roll I, them under the bus. You guys never thought about that? Yeah. I guess I just, that's me. What? Like, I, that's the type of weird stuff I think about. Like, I see the, the way it's bagged and everything like that. And right away, I go, like, oh, is there, are we getting over on, like your point, the illusion, like, yeah, I see that all the time. Like you see that at, at coffee shops where they have like the tiny little coffee mugs and like you see all For these sure things. they factor that in. I you got know, fooled. It's... I got fooled by a video once where this guy showed two size of Starbucks cups and he poured liquid in and said, oh, oh seen, they're the same. Actually. I seen that viral video. And I was like, what? I seen that. Viral. Like, <laughs> that's impossible. It's very convincing. That's yeah, not I, possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's possible. Makes you think they're ripping it off. Yeah, I know. Anyway, who's I, our shout out for today? Ooh. Oh, I have a I have a shout out to keep an eye on our good friend Max Lugavere right now. So Max, his doc is set to release <gasps> it this this month or next month. No way! Oh, I can't wait, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's gonna be good. So I know he's gonna have an LA that. premiere. I think he told me he's gonna have a Northern California premiere also. And I said, please keep the guys and I posted because yeah. I would love to be able to attend it. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to do. support that. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's gonna happen. It's oh, happening. Exciting, man. Yeah, really, really soon here. I can't wait to see that released. Element is an electrolyte powder you add to your water that gives you the right amount of sodium to fuel your workouts, give you better pumps, help you recover. Most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium. Element T does. It's also not artificially flavored, and there's also no sugar. And if you go through our link, you can get you can go check them out yourself. Go to drinkelementtcom forward slash mind pump. They have a lot of flavors there. Go check them out. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Andrew from Indiana. What's up, Andrew? What's going on, on Andrew? Hey, guys. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, brother. Good, how you doing? Good, man. Hey, uh, I'm running Powerlift for the third time, uh, and I would just run that program over and over, but uh, not really sustainable. But I love it so much. I find myself getting a lot stronger in phase two and phase three. And I know uh, Powerlift is really prescriptive based off percentages, really to set me up for the next workout uh, for the long term. But I find myself, uh, I'm really pacing way ahead of uh, some of the percentages. So um, even when I get to the end, after I've run it a couple of times, uh, I'll, I've will i done the program straight through a couple of times and I find that my one rep max, I, I'm, I can lift them much more than what I'm going through on the program. So really, I just wanted to ask, I know Powerless, one of the programs we wouldn't want to adjust much, but if I was going to push the percentages a little bit, how would I do that? Would I recalculate my one rep max? Would I just add five, 10 pounds? What's your advice there? So my question would be, why, why would you want to do that? Do you, do you think it's going to be faster I, or better, better strength gains? Is that the idea? Yeah, I think so. And just because I, I I find myself being significantly stronger, not like five pounds and really trying just like, like 15 or 20 pounds, like, and uh, maybe 20 pounds is a little heavy, but maybe 15 pounds uh, more as I get to the end of the workout. So my recovery is good. And usually in any other maps program, I would just kind of balance that I would push it a little bit. And if I saw my recovery dipping, I would back off. Uh, and if I pushed and 
felt good, then I keep going. But power lift, I know, is really prescriptive. And I just don't want to get out over my skis and uh, start lifting more in the second phase and then not really be ready for that final part now, of it. So I'll say this. So because power power lift is very, obviously, it's, it's power lifting specific. It's strength specific. Now, are there programs, hypertrophy goals, mobility goals, athletic performance, which is a little bit more multifaceted. But let me let me illustrate this by by telling you a little like a like a, a Soviet era style of training for squats. So what they would do is they would take an athlete, and let's say this athlete could do um, three hundred fifteen pounds for for fourteen reps. That was their max. What then what the athlete would do is they would do ten reps um, every day, even though it was way below what they could do. They could do four more reps. They would just do ten reps. And after the second week, they're like, oh my God, I think I could do 20 reps. And the coach would be like, no, just do 10, just do 10, just do 10. Then at the end of 30 days or 45 days, they would test their one rep max and it would have exploded far above and beyond had they continued to raise the weight to match their strength. In other words, tr this is a part of training for strength is feeling exactly how you feel mm -hmm. in that second and third phase. When you get to the very end, that's when you test. That's when you express it. Yes. So could you add more weight to kind of push it a little bit? You could, but I would argue it probably wouldn't get you better results. And it might actually. Yeah, you're more likely to not. Right. You're more likely to get worse results. It, what you're feeling is exactly what you want to feel yeah. Yeah. in a powerlifting program. You want to go through the phases and train and be like, oh, uh, I know this says 90%, but this feels like more like 80%. That's what you want to feel like when you're, when you're in those phases. Yeah. It is until the end that then you push to see where you're at. And what you'll find, and again, the strength athletes and, and strength coaches that work specifically with powerlifters will tell you like this produces the best results. Yeah. Powerlifting is beautiful because you, you, I do, I go through those first couple of phases and I think, Hey, I, this is, I'm not really pushing and I get to the end and each time my one rep max just goes up consistently and with good form and you feel really solid. And, uh, it's helped me tremendously. And I just, I intertwine it and weave it in with anabolic or performance or, um, yeah. split, whatever That's it is. Good. And, uh, I just keep getting stronger. So it's a great program. And I think that's good advice. Just stay the course. You're you're also the client. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit too. You're also the client that I would allow to learn this lesson the hard way too. Meaning that you've done this multiple times. You've, yeah. you've, you've seen what it does when you, when you, you trust the process and you do it. And then it's like, cause here's the thing, like it is a percentage. It is a guesstimate. There's going to be, there's always an individual variance. There's also the other variables of what's going on in your life. And maybe you're just crushing everything and you are, this is the time where you could stretch it a little bit more and maybe you could squeeze out a little bit. And you're the type of person who's already done this multiple times. And so I would maybe give you that freedom or latitude to, okay, well, if you think so, Andrew, you think that you're going to get a little bit more, let's go ahead, go ahead and give your extra five or 10 pounds. And then let's see what the end result is. And you know, maybe you, maybe you do get a little more, or maybe you get exactly the same, or maybe you get less. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, I mean, that's what this is all about. And you're, <clears throat> if you were somebody who like, I, I'm very familiar with who you are, how long you've been listening and how, how many programs you've gone through of ours. And so it's not like you're this brand new person who's coming to power lift, have no idea what you're doing. And, and like, you're already wanting to stretch the limits, I think I'd be more stern about, listen, dude, trust the process. You know, we're pretty good at what we do. I promise you're gonna be happy. But I think that you've already done that two or three times and you have a, a fair question, you know? Yeah, and you're already breaking yeah. it up with uh, anabolic and performance. Have you run symmetry as a, a sort of bridge between power lift before? Yeah, and uh, I ran that uh, after the second time I ran power lift, and uh, symmetry for me was like, okay, this is going to be boring, and mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you go through it because you know that's the right thing to do. And after I did that, it was tremendous, just the payoff that that program yeah. makes. So symmetry. If if somebody's out there and are listening and they think, hey, symmetry is not really for me, just run it and do it because it, it pays off and it made a huge difference in uh, just uh, my overall uh, just being balanced all over my body, exactly what the program's for. So it was, it was just tremendous. Yeah, yeah, right. no, yeah, perfect. Yeah, you're, you'll you'll get. I mean, what you're explaining and how you're feeling is what I'm looking for when someone's training yeah. uh, for powerlifting. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. What I'm not looking for is like, oh, every week I get stronger, but I'm really pushing hard and whatever. Then we'll typically back off. Think of powerlifting training as practice. Um, that's what it should feel like. You're practicing the lift. And then the big reveal is at the end. Is the that's game. You, yeah. yeah, which is just like you know that if, you know anybody who's played a sport, like – you're not, you're not, you know, sacrificing your body in diving for the basketball and doing things that could hurt yourself on the in practice. No. You're practicing everything and getting very good at it, but you're running at probably eighty yeah. percent. You're never running at hundred. Yeah, that that fatigue component plays a bigger role in hypertrophy than it does in in strength. Uh, but you you already run other programs with that, so I would say change nothing.
what you're yeah, feeling is exactly what you want to feel. You're right on, on point. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. All, All right, right Andrew. Thanks for calling awesome. in. Thanks, yeah. guys. Take you got easy, it, man. All right. Take care. I like how he got all nice with the suit and everything. For this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see your book in the background. I did yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. You know, I, so I just watched a video uh, with Dr. Stuart McGill. Is that his name? Yeah. Yep. And he was training a power lifter and trying to build lat strength. So they were mm. doing pull-ups and this is literally, it was a big dude. This is literally what he, gonna, what he did with the guy. He had the guy stand in front of the bar, grab the bar, activate his lats, get tight, do one hard pull up, come down and then, and then rest. rest. Yeah. The guy could have probably done 10 to 15 to, to, uh, you know, to actually work out. But all he did was one. And he says, I have my athletes yes. do literally 15 or 30 sets of just one. Dude. And it produces explosive strength gains. That's what he's experienced with mass powerlift. I'm so on board with this mentality. Yes. It is such a new thing that I wish I would have applied yes. when I was an athlete, like yeah. coming up through uh, all these different sports that I played. It's just like to train at that level to where you're not incorporating fatigue. You're just mastering these movements. It's it's game changer. Yes, and it develops power and strength. Yes, which is what these athletes are looking for. Yeah, no, I, I mean I, your advice was spot on. He is the type of person though that if I'm training, yeah, if he like was play my, with it. Yes, yeah. just, just so he can learn it. Because like, you know how it is in the back of your head, you're always going to go. You know, what, yeah. but what uh, if I they just want to keep yeah. me safe? But yeah. they don't want me to get the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, he's, but. He's all, I mean, he's done the program already, what, three times already? Said, yeah. yeah. And he even said, like, he's paying attention to how he feels afterwards. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like, you know, that type of client, if we were training together, like mm -hmm. I would say, okay, let's go ahead and see it. You know, we'll yeah. go ahead and add a little five. Spill five, over a little bit. Yeah, yeah. See how it goes. Yeah, spill over a little bit. Let's see how, how and then, and then, and then you feel it and then you realize like, oh shit, okay, I just need to stay. This is what it's supposed to feel like. Totally. Right now, he's questioning that, is this is what it's supposed to feel like? And the answer is yes. Our next caller is Dylan from Florida. What's up, Dylan? What's up, man? What's up, guys? What up? How you doing? How can we help you? Hey, man, just just gotta say real quick, thank you for everything, uh, all the fitness information. Uh, I hopped on Maps Anabolic at, before I was doing splits and got the leanest and the strongest I'd ever been. Blew my mind. So just want to say thank you, guys. Right on, bro. Oh yeah, what you got for us? All right. So my question: I said I'm currently halfway through Anabolic Advanced, and I was having trouble with two things. When going to failure on the weeks we do failure training, does that mean I quite literally cannot do another rep? I know you say to go to form breakdown, but is it possible to go to the point where you cannot do another rep without breaking form? And then my second question was, during the failure weeks, are we supposed to still be lifting slow like the volume weeks or are we supposed to go heavy and rep it out at a regular tempo? All right. So for the first question, uh, it is possible. Yeah, good question. By the yeah, way. it is possible to go to the point where you can't move the bar without breaking form but that takes a lot of discipline and understanding that's like, a very advanced yeah. lifter to do. i mean we do that i know yeah. you do that yeah we i know do. how to stop before my body twists or my elbow moves out of position right but most people can't do that so most people i would say stop the rep before where you're like oh you know you're grinding it up you're like there's no way i'll be able to get another rep and then stop yeah. there and it really doesn't make that big of a difference where you go but okay. stopping a rep halfway through without twisting your body moving your knee your hip or whatever that takes very, very you need good safety bars. For that yeah, too. lots of self awareness too, and yes, safety bars. Um, so that would be the first part. Second part, you want controlled reps because what you'll find is you're going to get really strong or stronger, and going to failure, the risk, the injury risk is higher, and so you're better out going slow because you won't use as much weight. That's just the bottom line, and I found that with myself. Like I was, I was getting really heavy with the squats, and rather than adding weight, I slowed down the reps, and it was just it served me a lot better. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I was getting toasted after those barbell squats. I was just going heavy, trying to rep it out for failure. And I was just like, I was getting destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just slow down the rep, you know, four second negative type of deal. Um, and then go to failure and those failure. Uh, what, how far along are you in the program? Well, at that point I was halfway through. I didn't end up finishing it because I was kind of getting burnt out. Okay. I think probably because I was, I was going super heavy on those uh, failure yeah. days. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You got it. You definitely want to control the rep. So that you're not just adding, because you'll, you'll, your strength probably in the initially went up very quickly, and that'll burn you out for sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome guys, awesome, thank you. Bro. You got it, man. What hey, are you following any programs now? Can we send you something? Um, I mean, if you guys, yeah, if you guys want to send me something, I I would really appreciate it. I'm following. So this is my plan right now. I don't know. Actually, I wanted to ask you guys if this is going to be too much volume back to back. I'm in anabolic right now. I was thinking about going to aesthetic and then straight into the split. Yeah. Yep. The answer is yes. Too much volume. Yeah. So you're in anabolic right now. Okay. 
Interrupt it with symmetry. I'm in anabolic right now. All right, follow symmetry afterwards. Mm -hmm. We'll send that to you. After anabolic? Yep. Okay, awesome, guys. I think, thank you. Appreciate it a lot. You got it, man. Right, Thanks right. for calling in. Yeah, thank you. Did he mean he was in anabolic advanced advance. right now? Or yes. Anabolic? Yeah. No, okay. now he's in anabolic. He was in anabolic advanced. Now he switched to regular maps anabolic. Okay. Okay. But he wanted to go aesthetic. Okay, either way, that's a good follow up. Yeah. 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 The whole like going to failure, you got to be smart with it. Um, it does produce very quick strength gains and you're better off with controlled tempo to increase the, the, yeah, the fine the line to skirt. Yeah, dude. Cause you want, I know my ego kicks in. I mean, this morning <laughs> I worked out with my ego and yeah. it's like, you just want to throw weight. Um, and, uh, yeah, the shark know, eyes come out. Then you get, you know, reminded because your body injures. Well, I mean, this, <laughs> it, 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 great question. And I think it just highlights um, why we waited as long as we did to release a program that programmed failure into it. Yes. Yep. Is that it's just, it's such a fine line and it's not that you can't, and there's not tremendous value and studies to support the benefits of failure training. It's just that it's so overly abused and you're more likely to overreach than you are to hit it right on the nose. Yeah. And it just takes a, a lot of years of discipline and, and practice to, to get to that point. And I think we just, you misinterpret that those initial gains that you get from the, the failure training to like, oh, this is the better yep, way of training. Yep. And then you just start to adopt that. And it's like, no, it's like you have to be judicious, judicious about how much you use it. That's right. Our next caller is Andrew from South Africa. Andrew, what's happening? How can we help you? Good evening. Good evening. I love watching your show. I was just watching one now and I'm um, yeah. Um, yeah, I love your content. Thanks for everything you guys do. Um, really cool to be joining you. It's night time this side. Um, I'll just, I suppose, head into the background and the context and then eventually get towards the question. Sure. All right. Um, so um, interesting journey in May last year, I looked very different. I was weighing, I mean, I've converted everything to pounds because I know you guys don't work in kilograms, but um, yeah, May last year, I was weighing 222 pounds. I went down to my lowest weight, which was 167 pounds. That got I got there sort of end of November, early December. Um, I've managed to gain four pounds now, sitting on 77.8 kilograms. Basically, a lot of calorie counting. What's it, a deficit of like 180,000 calories to get here? Um, been an epic journey. Um, but yeah, sort of since December, I got to a stage where I was dropping weight very quickly. And you went from that stage of dropping sort of kilograms at a time. You know, some at one stage I was dropping a kilogram, four kilograms a month, sorry, 8.8 .8 pounds, 10 pounds a month I was dropping. Um, and then sort of in December, I started moving into the more of a, okay, so now I've lost weight. Where am I going to from here? You know, so I went into more of an aesthetics type of focus you know so now i've been training hard i train five times a week two muscle groups if i'm doing a focus group like like the smaller muscles like arms i'll do three times a week um i'm still counting calories it's a very hard behavior to stop in terms of um like i know i watched your videos about intuitive eating and i've tried to get into it but the thought sort of terrifies me quite a bit but sort of right now where i'm at is that I'm on 2000 calories a day, Monday to Thursday, 2000 to 2200 calories, four times a week. And then on the weekends, I sort of relax family time, friends don't count calories, relax it. And with that behavior, I've managed to sort of stay the same. What's interesting though, is that from, I think I sent you guys the photograph from December to now, the body has still, is still changing all the time, which is quite exciting to see. Um, so I think getting into the question, sorry about all the context. Um, I suppose now what I'm looking at doing is that like, I never really thought where I want to end up. If you guys have suggestions, I'd love them. But sort of something I wanted to talk about is how do you move from, yeah, calorie counting in a sustainable way? Because we talk, you guys talk about calorie counting on the channel. Everyone talks about calorie counting, just up them, just down them. But like, there is that real life thing about being a family guy, going out on weekends, seeing friends. And like, you don't want to be that dude at a wedding. Like this weekend, I've got a wedding sitting there gone fat secret logging my calories at a wedding trying to guess what it is so i suppose um yeah it's just um how do you sustainably sort of get into that calorie counting mindset and go into i think i would like to keep on growing i have been growing a little bit you know and like i know i need to eat more i am still gaining strength as i train but like yeah i don't know what uh, i would say probably less than 10 percent a month a little bit lower but yeah i'm early in the journey i've only really been pushing the weights really hard since december um, but yeah, it's sort of where to from here. And I suppose I've spoken a lot. Yeah, no, great, <laughs> great context. 
and, pho- and phenomenal yeah, job. Like it, phenomenal yeah. job. You're doing great, a really good job. Yeah. You, you might be overthinking a little bit. Now, I, I do think that a bulk and a slow bulk is, is going to serve you well. I think getting stronger is great. And the stronger you get, the more muscle you build, the more the faster your metabolism will be, and the more you the more flexibility you'll have with your diet. Now you came from a place where you lost a lot of weight. So your fear is gaining body fat again. The opposite of my fear when I was, you know, when I was, you know, back in the day, I was like, I didn't want to go on a cut. So telling you to go on a bulk probably feels uh, the same way, but that's going to be your best bet. And I think you'll feel your best uh, with that. You also can you know, approach it though. Cause I know that the goal here is to move to this kind of intuitive eating, right? And you're already practicing this on the weekend. So you're not, you're not that far yeah. from it. I know it just sounds probably scary to do it for the whole week now, uh, and maybe what a transition looks like is maybe flip that, maybe uh, be a little more uh, calculated on the weekends for two days and be a little more flexible on the weeks to see how that works out yeah. before you go all seven days. And But I think you're all, you've already kind of figured out how to do that. My suggestion would be, I think you've done an incredible job on the aesthetic part, right? You lost all this weight. I think your physique looks great. You look really healthy. Now I'd go all performance focused. And allow allow the way you eat to be dictated by your performance in the gym and how you feel. That's a great way. Versus getting focused on am I getting fatter? Am I adding weight? Forget about the scale. Forget all that. Like you're you're in a great place right now. You're eating a healthy amount of calories, but I would like to see you eating more. And so I would go towards like maybe like one of our performance programs and really or even something like power lift that would be a great one for you is to try and get really strong and focus more on the weight on the bar and getting stronger while also feeding the body when you're hungry and just make good choices allow yourself that freedom to eat when you want to eat but just make good choices when you do that and don't like i always say don't eat like an asshole and i think you'll do really well and and don't like if you like especially when you're training for performance you, uh, the hardest part will come. What the hardest part will be for you is the appetite's going to increase, which is a really good sign. It means that your body is saying, feed me. I need more. We're growing. I'm trying to build muscle. Don't be afraid of that. Just, just eat good choices. And I promise if you make good choices, high protein meals with good, good, like stay away from sugars and saturated fat and tons of stuff like that. Just eat good balanced meals and feed yourself when you're hungry. I think you're going to get the best of both worlds. I think it's going to ease you into the intuitive eating. And I also think it's going to continue to shape your physique up and look even better than where you're currently already at. Yeah. I, I, you're, here's one step you can take is to just hit your protein targets and get a good general idea of what, like let's say your protein targets are 150 grams a day, let's just say. You know what 50 grams of protein looks like in a serving of, of let's say, chicken, fish, or beef. Well, then just make sure that you hit that. And then the rest, don't worry about it. That's one step away from tracking everything. And that tends to take care of everything else. You're doing a good job, dude. I mean, you're doing a really good job. I think you're you're going to see some great... If you, I think Adam gave you the best yeah. advice. You go on power lift and try and get strong. I think you're going to see some incredible... There's a whole new changes. world in the performance direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you'll... you'll You'll catch fire with that and then see kind of where that leads you. But uh, there's a lot of different options uh, leading after power. Power list probably the best to build that base of just pure strength. Yeah. So what I'd love to do is we'll send over power lift to you. We'll also give you access to the forum. So you're in there with us. And then if you just keep in touch with us through the process. Yeah. So because what will happen, because it does with clients that have lost a lot of weight like you, is you'll probably get in your own head at one point. And let us be there to kind of talk you off the ledge and let you know if you're doing a good job and to stay the course. So use the forum like that. Check in with us. Let us know, you know, as you're going through the program, how you're feeling, what's going on strength wise. And uh, uh, we'll keep you on track. I think that you're in a really good place right now. But I think that that's the transition I would move you into to get you towards the intuitive eating. And I think you you already kind of have a good idea. You're doing it on the weekends mm-hmm. already. And just, uh, again, during the weekdays, you're probably less likely to go out with friends and drink and do those things. And so, and Sal gives great advice. I, I love to have my clients, hey, just focus on the protein. Yep. Just hit your protein intake. That, let that be the only thing you track right now and make good choices. Just don't, don't eat like an asshole and train the way you are. And I promise that you're, you, it will, it's really, really hard to over consume enough to where you're going to put on a, a, a excess amount of body fat if you're training properly you're hitting your protein intake and you're hitting mostly all whole foods i mean then then you're you're most yeah. likely just going to build muscle yeah good luck putting on body fat that way that's actually hard to do and you're really mo- and hard. most everything's going to get allocated over into totally. 
building muscle so long as you stay away from yeah. like over indulging and binging and drinking and doing like if you just if you're worried about the slippery slope you know that people tend to fear uh keep a journal and write in the journal how you feel and then that'll keep you aware of uh oh i'm starting to get those bad behaviors with food or i'm starting to use it as a way to you know um so y y a journal can help you with that self awareness but i think what we're saying right now is going to do it you 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 you're, you're sound like you're totally on the right track yeah, thanks, guys. I, you know, I, I, all that you're saying is sort of, I think what you're doing is giving me permission, like, let go. Yep. You've, you've done the weight loss thing now. Now just focus, like you said, I love that thing. Just focus on strength, focus on your eating, chill out a little bit of it. Like you said, you're going to notice yourself at this stage with the sensitivity, you're going to notice that you're overdoing yep. the calories. Um, Just something, um, just out of interest, what I've struggled with with eating is getting enough carbs. And I don't know if that's just because nah. carbs have got more calories in them and I've been sticking to things. So like the protein, I can hit 200 grams a day really easily. But like carbs, if I hit like 160 on a strict day, like, yo, I've done really well for myself. So I don't know if you've got any advice for people that have not eaten a lot of carbs. You know, I think a lot of this has been fueled by my own body fat that was there before but like um yeah sorry to change the topic a little bit there no. but like carbs is always one to worry about whether i'm having enough of it or is it like you said earlier follow if you're hungry you're that's probably it. not eating enough food yeah that's it go yep. by hunger and performance you know how i like to use carbs uh perform stick to whole natural foods stick to yeah. easily digestible carbs yeah, those are the two things. workouts with them yeah so like don't don't go with candy and you know fruit juices and soda stuff like obvious rice and whole fruit man. rice fruit yeah. potato and then and then use it as a performance uh booster so i'll know if i need to bump my carbs a little bit by my strength in the gym or if i need to cut it down a little bit by my digestion or how i feel and that's that's how i use carbs and I love to his point, this is like, so when I'm moving somebody more intuitive, but we're still kind of tracking some things and you're going to start messing with carbohydrates. If you pay attention to track, actually do this, especially when we're on a performance focus. Okay. So let's say, I don't know what time you lift. You lift in the middle of the day, morning, night. When do you lift? Super early, 5 a.m., 5.30 Okay. So then we'll be looking at the nighttime. So at nighttime, play around with the amount of carbohydrates you allow yourself to have in that dinner and really challenge yourself. Sometimes go... 30 to 50 grams, then try another one with like 100 to 150 grams. Like go in that and everything in that range and pay attention to how you feel when you go into that workout yep. the next morning and allow that to steer how much, you know, how much rice or how much pasta or how much whatever you potatoes you eat the night before going into it. Like, don't think about how I look, think about how I feel going into that workout and how you perform it in that workout and allow that to dictate how much carbohydrates you have with that meal. Totally. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Amazing being on the channel. Thank you so much for having me. Really, really appreciate it. And love your advice. Love your content. Keep going. Thank awesome. You. All right. Thank Andrew. you, man. Yeah. We'll Thanks see, for calling from all the way right. from South Africa. That's, That's awesome. That's right. We'll yeah. see you in the forum. It, it, his, his, his perfect English accent with the bookcase in the back. I'm like, this dude <laughs> <Stereotypical>. is smart. <Yeah. laughs> you know, <laughs> it always does that. Just based on that. He, yeah. He's going to, he, if he does a bulk right, he's going to gain some serious muscle. Yeah, I mean, gonna... from where he's come from, uh -huh. it'll blow his mind. And then what will happen, I've worked with people like this, is that, you know, I know you guys have too, his metabolism will get so fast, he's be like, oh, that's I'm eating like crazy and I'm not getting fatter. keep eating and be like, whoa. That'll be the hardest part. That's why I wanted him in the forum because I know yeah. that what will happen if he starts lifting power lifts and start feeding himself, He's gonna get hungrier, yeah, and, and his body's yep. gonna want more, and he's totally. gonna build muscle. He's gonna get nervous then, about that, yeah, and he'll get like, oh You're my, right. I was at two thousand. Now all of a sudden, I'm eating twenty eight hundred. This yeah. is way too much, and he'll start to freak out a little bit. But I, uh, guy did a great job, and he's in a good yep. place right now. And I think Powerlift's a perfect program. So look forward to see what happens. Next caller is Chris from Ohio. What's, what's up, Chris? Chris? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, fellas? How are you? Good, good man. Good. What's happening? Oh. Uh, First, I will apologize. Uh, I'm actually at a state conference, so if you hear some music in the background, I'm sitting at a hotel, and I just tried to sneak away somewhere. No worries. But appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, just going to jump right into it. So I was actually caught off guard because of all the shows that I've watched, it seems like some people have to wait quite a while before they're able to get on and, and chat with you. I think I put the, I submitted this just a couple days ago. Uh, <laughs> something worked out, and I was able to talk. Uh, so last year, I really got into the nutrition side of things. I've been a college athlete and uh, kind of let my, sh my personal shape get out, of way, get out of whack, but I took control of my nutrition. 
I dropped from 224 down to 197 as part of a challenge. And then since then, I've gotten up to 212, but I'm starting another challenge uh, just for a mental and physical challenge to see if I can get down to what some say is stage lean. I'm kind of quirky in that manner. But being a career firefighter, something that has always kind of nagged at me is with the 2448 schedule, how does fleet play into it? How do I optimize growth after this cut phase with my 2448 schedule? Uh, typically, I work out first thing in the morning by myself without a spotter, uh, fasted. And so, you know, is are there issues with that kind of setup? And also, is doing t- am I doing too much volume because I work out usually two out of every three days, taking the day off that I come off of shift? And so, just kind of wanting to pick your guys' brains a little bit. This is a fantastic opportunity, so I'm all ears, and I got my notes ready. So, explain the twenty four forty eight. So, you work for twenty four hours, and then you're off it for forty eight hours. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. And on that twenty four hours, it's just really hit or miss. Uh, if you get five to six runs a day, or we could have twenty runs a day. Okay. And and, and, and it's four days or five days a week. Are you lifting? I I. It's just two out of every three days. So I usually lift the morning before my shift, the morning of my shift, and then the following morning or the following day I take off. You, you know, I think I if you're modifying the intensity and the volume, I think that's not a bad approach at all. Are, are you progressing? Are you seeing good? I mean, your, your oh, pictures look great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as far as from strength gains, uh, I never really max out. So I just kind of go into... Uh, a point of failure. Uh, currently running a program um, that really emphasizes hypertrophy. So uh, the big thing is pushing, finding that failure limit. Um, and so I, I try to do that with the weights that I have available. But again, the safety component comes in too because I'm always working out at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning by myself, and I don't want to overextend myself into the point of injury. Yeah, well, so stopping two reps short of failure, the data shows pretty clearly is 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 probably enough. Um, so you don't need to go, although short stints of training to failure can have some benefit um, long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really make a difference, um, and it's probably better not to uh, for the most part. Um, it's you know as far as are you training too much, you got to base it off of how you feel. So if you feel good, you're getting good sleep, you seem to be getting stronger, you're progressing. You don't have weird cravings and hot, cold intolerances, low libido, that type of stuff. You're probably doing great. I like your approach of two on, one off. Taking that day off, the day after work makes a lot of sense. And then the way I would judge the volume and frequency intensity is based off of how I felt on those two days. So if you had an exceptionally hard day of work and you took that day off and the following day you're supposed to work out, I would go real easy kind of go through the motions, kind of move the body. And then once I felt good, I'd push myself. But you're going to have to listen to your body a little bit because your schedule is not typical. Like, it, it, Not only is it not typical, even even your schedule can can vary in terms of the intensity of your work. Like you just said, you could have four or five runs in a day versus 20. I'm sure that they feel very different, right? You have a day where it's just nonstop. It probably... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so that's how I would judge the... Or that's how I would dictate the intensity and the volume of my workouts would be based off of that. So if you're coming off a day where you had four runs and it was like nothing, like, all right, let's go for it. But if you're coming off a day, you know, where you, it was like nonstop, man, you were pushing your body. Don't let the cortisol fool you. You know what I mean? Don't get, don't work off of that nervous stress energy. Just be like, you know what? That was rough. I'm going to go easy. I'm going to go easy on this workout. And that'll give you better results. Yeah, I, I, at first glance, I would say it seems like too much volume. But if you're doing a good job of modifying intensity, then it, it's okay, you know, because it because it, your weeks probably do vary so much, which would just add the complexity of doing this, right? It's not as straightforward as, hey, this is too much or not enough volume. It's like, you know, one week it could be too much volume, and then another week it's you know you know just right. So, you know, if you feel confident that you've been doing a pretty good job of modifying that, I don't I don't see a, a problem with that. I do think though, like a program. This is not a time in in your life or at this point where I would probably be pushing as, as great of benefits as you can get for hitting failures. Sometimes, like I just don't, I like I, I would love to see him run power lift. Mm. I'd love to see like a program like that where we're modifying the the intensity. He's not mm. training to failure, and it's mm-hmm. not until the end. 
something along those lines, like as far as a program right now. But if you're seeing gains and you and you're and you feel good, then I don't know how much I would also change or modify that. Okay, that sounds great. I, I the big thing, and I think we've kind of hit it on the head there is just I've always been concerned. Anytime I find a program or have tried to put together a program. I always have to modify it uh, to work two on one off just due to our schedule. Yep. And so I uh, am listening to some of your past podcasts and YouTube videos. Just, I was really kind of concerned if I was doing too much as opposed to scaling back a little bit and then maybe still seeing the same results. Look for the signs. You want to look for the signs of doing too much. Uh, so okay. yeah, stiffness, um, achiness, loss of performance, um, sleep disturbances, low libido, cravings, hot, cold intolerances. Um, but performance would be the big one, the biggest one. Like you go to the gym, you're like, man, I am not as strong, nor do I have as much stamina as I normally do. Um, then that'd be the case. But you know, with the average, first off, nobody has perfect controls. Even the, even the typical nine to five person doesn't have perfect controls, but in your case, it's even more, um, there, there's even more variables. So in other words, in a perfect world where all the controls are the same, well, then you would just follow the workout and you would apply the same intensity every single time you work out. But that's not how, that's not how things work. It, it, your schedule is different. So you can't even follow a typical split that's designed for the average person. You have to modify it. But even the work that you do, like most jobs, you know, except for first, first responders, people that works in emergency rooms, for example, I've trained a lot of clients in this case. Uh, one day can be vastly different from the next day. Yeah. So you're going to have to modify your intensity and volume based off of that. Also, you also need to factor in that he's okay. So, you know, when we started this conversation, you, you mentioned that we're, we're, we're heading towards just like, let's try and get stage lean, right. Get ripped type yeah. of process. So you're going to be on a mm -hmm. pretty, a pretty hard cut. So like I would tell my competitors when I was coaching them, like the, the real work has already been done for you. Like, the way your your muscles are going to look and like what the the end result of this is actually already really been taken care of. At this point, it's just a matter of how much of that muscle you lose or don't lose, because you're going in. A, you've already you're not going to make big muscle gains in this cut. That's just yeah. not going to happen. So at this point, right. it's, it's literally just carving away the body fat and revealing all your hard work that you've been doing for the previous you know months or years. Right. So at that mm -hmm. with, with that in mind you know, doing failure training and, and pushing the body to try and get gains, I think is less advantageous than In a mo yeah, modifying yeah. intensity, maintaining, like sending a good signal, focusing on getting good rest. Like you're, that's, what's going to help you not lose muscle. What will help you lose muscle faster is overreaching, not eating enough, not getting good sleep. So you're always better off in this phase of your journey because we're in this cut is to like I'm I'm better off pulling back on intensity and just going in there and touching the weights and letting my diet do most of the work here because this at this point the diet is what's going to really control how well you look at the end of this on and how much muscle you lose or don't lose will be off that and the harder you push in a deficit like that especially if other stressors are involved the faster you're going to pare down and lose muscle and so at this point like if you're ever considering like oh should i do an extra this or should i try and go to failure this set if the, if you even have that question that the, the answer is no don't do it it's yeah. not worth it you're not going to gain a bunch of muscle from that extra set or that extra 10 pounds you put on the bar right now you're just trying to maintain that muscle as you carve away the body yeah. fat and that, and that and the data on failure is pretty clear like in a short term you, you know applied properly it could lead to great strength gains and muscle but for the most part, there's no there's no difference except that it hammers the body more. <laughs> so it actually tends to take away uh, people's progress. People that preach failure all the time, um, these fitness fanatic, you know, fitness influencer morons. Uh, a don't look at the data, and B don't you know they that's what they do for a living. So, and they tend to they tend to express their insecurities through their their media. I mean, the truth is, we have one program that uses failure, and it alternates failure weeks. So you're not even training failure every single week. And it's one program. And I don't tell and I tell people not to run it back to back. Every other program we do is you, you stop about two or three reps short of failure. Every strength sport in the world, by the way, strength sports like powerlifting, Olympic lifting, they've got good workout programming. These workout programs that you find online for the most part are but you know, these dudes, oh, this is how you build the most hypertrophy, or whatever. They're not time tested. Powerlifting programs, Olympic lifting programs, they were funded by governments and scientists and 
And they don't train to failure. Powerlifters don't train to failure until the day of the meet. Olympic lifters never train to failure until the day of the meet. So uh, it's so overrated. Can you use it as a tool? Yes, but it's so overrated. I I, I almost always recommend especially, people. Don't especially when you're 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 playing with you sleep and a caloric deficit too. So that yeah. the, the time to experiment with stuff like that is in a surplus, well yeah. rested. You know, go ahead test your stuff like that. But like I said, you've done the hard work. The physique that you were going to, you know, come out with at the end of this challenge or present is actually already there. Like the, it's there. It's now. It's <laughs> like, can I preserve as much of this hard work I did while nice, just slowly carving away a body fat? And there's an art to that. There really is of just and let the the diet do the work. Let the diet do the work. Don't try and of, work off the fat. That's right. That's out. right. That's the mistake that like rookie competitors do that would get in get, doing their first show thinking that they're going to outwork the ex competitor to get there. And it's like, no, nah, that's one of the biggest mistakes. It's like, you already did the hard work. The hard work was building all that muscle. Now it's like this fine line of balancing stress and also maintaining muscle while living in this deficit uh, on this, you know, six, 12, however long cut you're going, you're going to go into. Uh, can I ask just real quick? So this, this whole cut is going to may and then, Moving forward, like I said in my question, I don't really have any aspirations for getting on a stage. And so beyond this, uh, to actually gain maybe a little bit more muscle is the only difference between the, the two then, just cal calorie consumption, yep. eating eating higher? That's yep. right. Yep. And you can handle more okay. volume and more intensity That's right. with higher calories. So in a cut, you can, your body can handle less. People tend to do the opposite. That's what Adam's saying. Oh, I got to get cut. I'm in a deficit, so now I'm going to double my workouts. Like, whoa, wrong application. It's the opposite. When yeah, I you work out less with less body, intensity, definitely. less volume when you're in a deficit. Once my once my prep started, like once it was time for me to get ready for the the six weeks heading into the show or like that, I'm just touching weights. I'm going in and touching the weights, and and I'm and I'm trying to move the weight that I was doing the previous week, knowing that I'm probably not going to be able to because I'm going to get weaker. I'm in a deficit. I'm losing, and I'm just trying to hang on to that that muscle while I'm letting the food do all the cutting that's and, and the mistake that yeah. all these guys make that have a hard time in these cuts is they try and push their body thinking that the harder they get after it the faster they get to this body fat percentage or the lower they're going to get body fat percentage and that's just not how the body works so you're sending an opposite signal to the body it's saying you're not feeding me enough nutrients and now you're pushing me harder than what you were pushing me three four weeks ago like it's going to revolt and it's not going to respond the it's way gonna you want to reduce its caloric requirements right. by reducing muscle and yep. it's going to hold on to body fat as a stress response, and it does this by making your hormones go to shit. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> not a great approach. Yeah. Go in there, touch the weights, let the diet. Sounds good. Let the diet do the work. You got it, man. All right. Well, hey, I'm actually in Columbus, so I was yeah. thinking of stopping by. You guys are going to be at Pro Gym on Friday. Yeah. We're not now. No, uh, there actually, was. They, yeah. It was canceled on us, unfortunately, so we won't yeah. be there. But uh, I, no. are you still going down to the Arnold? No, no. no. But I, yeah, I'd okay. like to send you a program. Well, then I won't see you. Yeah, Chris, yeah. I'd like to send you one of our programs, <laughs> yeah. though. Let me send you one of our programs. Send power lift. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send you Matt's power lift. Oh, that, that's fantastic! Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you it's it, not man. needed, but I appreciate it. Thank yeah, yeah. you so much. You got uh, it, man. That way, that way, you get some good workout programming. I, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't say it out loud, but I see who's programming your following. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got you. We held back. We thank got you, dude. You. All right, Chris. Well, thank you. Take appreciate it, easy, it. Take it easy, man. I mean, he's got the right approach. I like what he said about the two on, one off. You know, the yeah, day after it's his, the best way to handle that schedule. Yeah, sure. and it's the intensity. You just got to modify the intensity. I mean, you can theoretically work out every day if you modify the intensity. Uh, well enough mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's where people tend to you screw. can the thing i'd be really cautious of the reason why i didn't like it that much is because i know that he's going into a deficit for a cut that's a that's mm -hmm. a big so one. if you're going in that way and you're also running a program that is encouraging failure yeah, training that's gonna be rough it's oh, yeah, you're well, really rolling well, that's the in, you're not modifying the intensity then if you're always going to fail exactly. right you know what I mean? right I, and, and at this point there's no reason to do it there's mm -hmm. no reason to train to failure at this point you've done the hard work you're not going to yeah. build any muscle right now if you're a natural athlete and you are cutting for getting ripped like a bodybuilding show, even if you're not going to get on stage, but you're doing that, you're training with that thought process, then at this point, totally. it's touch the weights, let the diet do the work. Any more that you do in the training aspect is only going to shoot yourself in the foot. 100%. Look, we have a free hard gainer guide. If you're a hard gainer, if you have a tough time building muscle, go download our hard gainer guide. It's free. It'll help you out. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.